Unfortunately, it is very difficult to know exactly why this document was written. It certainly cannot be said it was written for pastoral reasons, because it must have been known, and very clearly known, to its drafters that such a document would not only offend, but also scandalize many Catholics in some parts of the world, especially here in Africa. We have believers, some of them, especially in St. Matthias Parish, they walk for two days to attend Mass with me. Two days. How many Christians in New York, Rome, Frankfurt, walk for two days to attend Mass? These are the simple people. It would seem in many parts of the world, certainly many people have celebrated this document as a sign of progress in the church and the popularity of its, its drafters has certainly increased. Our major concern is that this document looks to us like a heresy, it reads like a heresy, and it's, it affects heresy. The document <laughs> asks us to bless two people of same sex as individuals, but not as a couple. So these two people of same sex, who the previous night slept together like a couple, and present themselves to us as a couple, are blessed as individuals, but they leave our presence as a couple. They go to their home as a couple. They sleep in the same bed as a couple. But the document says that they are not blessed as a couple, or they, although they appear to have been blessed like a couple. How could this be not changing the authentic teaching of the church? Some have said his advisors didn't want to stop him because they were afraid of him. But what would they be afraid of? What would they lose by defending the truth? We in this diocese, and certainly in Malawi, are not going to allow the recommended blessings of same-sex union in our diocese. It is very sad for me that for the first time in the history of the church, a document released from the Holy See signed by the Holy Father, is rejected by his fellow bishops. But we have no choice. We cannot allow such an, an offensive and apparently blasphemous declaration to be implemented in our diocese. Our rejection of this document have accused us of many things that by sticking to rules of the church or the scripture and the st and tradition of the church, we prevent him carrying out our responsibility as pastors effectively. Some have told us that we should be willing to explore new paths and new roads in governing the local churches, such as blessing same-sex unions. Some have said that we should not be ideologically rigid in our faith and in our pastoral work and in teaching our faith. Instead, we are being taught and encouraged to allow our doctrine of the faith to change alongside ideological changes taking place in the world so that the, the faith may be modern, so that the church might be modern. In other words, we are told that in a, fulfilling our responsibility, our successors of the apostles, leading people to God, we should be fashionable. Unfortunately to all this, all these accusations, our response is clear. Please keep your allies for yourself. <laughs> you must judge for yourself whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to such advice, ill advice, and to obey you rather than God. For we on our part cannot stop tearing the faith entrusted to our pastoral care Amen. by God through the Holy Father that they should follow and do what is rooted in scriptures and in the tradition of the church. All those who ill advise us like this, our response is that we are not idiots. We know your wow. ultimate goal, I which I will not mention here, wow. but total Takana, we are not accepting this declaration. Jesse, 
the guy just, we got to have the Bible, tradition. We have no choice. I mean, that's the kind of guy that's we're got the idiots. courage. <laughs> yeah, we're not idiots. I mean, I would love to see that guy as the next pope. Because Woo! he doesn't pull any punches, dude. And, and you know what I really like most about him? He said in his talk, if you hear it, the whole thing, he was brought in from Pope, Paul, Pope uh, Francis, you know, set, put him in as the bishop there. And, you know, the normal thing, you know, is, oh, well, I just got to zip my lip and keep quiet. No, no. He has such a love for his flock, Jesse, that he's willing to lay his life down for the flock. Because I think, here's what I think is going to happen to him. He may get Strickland. Yep, that's where it's going to, you, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, yeah, he may get, he may, you, get he may get pavoned. Yeah, but what did you think, Jesse, of a bishop speaking so plainly to the people? I mean, isn't that refreshing? Th th this man, you could, this man sounded like uh, the resurrection of Fulton Sheen. Yeah, yeah. That, that, he, that type of clarity. Yeah. And and I'll tell you, I think where a lot of his grace comes from. Can, can you imagine all the African martyrs that were killed because they didn't want to embrace homosexuality, uh, starting with you know Saint Charles Lawanga and many exactly. others? Exactly. The souls of those Africans are praying for the prelates in Africa, and that's why they they have this apostolic boldness, yep. especially against this sin. Yeah. And then I could also imagine. I know this is unpopular to say. Yeah. Uh, Marcel Lefebvre. Yeah. Uh, he's, I'm sure, uh, in eternity, he's praying for them. Remember he was a missionary in Africa oh, for like 30 years work there in Africa. Yeah. And so I'm sure his prayers are bearing fruit as well oh, yeah. because these Africans, Terry, they have this boldness, uh, that, that we saw from him, from Ottaviani and many others during Vatican II against the modernists. We, these African bishops are speaking out against modernism yeah. because modernism embraces, uh, sexual licentiousness, Terry. Now, why don't you really tell me what you think, Jesse? <laughs> you know, you know, Jess, that, that gives me great hope, like I said at the beginning of the show, that the next conclave, which is going to come hap it's going to happen soon. Pope Francis is 87 years old. His health is frail. I don't believe those guys that he pointed cardinals are going to vote for another Pope Francis. I think the light, I think they're going to get red-pilled by this and they're going to turn and say, no, no, we can't go this way. This is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a worldly view. And that's my prayer, Jess. Uh, Terry, I agree with you. And there's an article here that basically confirms everything that you just said. It's called Pope Francis faces growing worldwide pushback against the same sex blessing doctrine. Yeah. And so if you think that fierce opposition to the latest initiative by globalist uh, Pope Francis, namely the blessing of same sex unions is limited to the conservative American bishops like Joseph Strickland. Think again. <laughs> All over the world, prelates and faithful alike have vigorously opposed the new directives from Francis as a growing number of Catholic bishops in Africa and Europe are publicly voicing their rejection of the new document by the Vatican. This is, by the way, this comes from the Gateway Pundit. It's a... Uh, one of my wife's favorite websites to go access information it says um, <clears throat> all over the world. Uh, it says uh, th the issue is not is yet another polarizing initiative in Francis's quest to remake the Catholic church according to his very peculiar vision of the institution. The document entitled fiducia supplican states that blessings can be offered to the people in, in same sex relationships if they're not confused with the ritual of marriage, my comment is, of course, they're going to be confused with the ritual of marriage because it looks the same. That's right. O optics are everything. The article says, while the document reaffirmed that marriage is a lifelong union only between a man and a woman, many conservatives in the church fear that, that the move is a step towards the Catholic church's accepting homosexuality. Here's my comment. We're right at the doorstep of, of accepting same-sex marriage oh, yeah. with this document. Yeah, We're, actions yeah. speak louder than words, Jeff. Yes. So this this will usher in yeah. fire to fall from heaven like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. And as prophesied by Our Lady of Akita, Japan, that fire will fall from heaven, Terry, yeah. if we cross that line. And many people like James Martin are crossing that line. Thankfully, the pushbacks coming from the Zambia Bishops Conference, yes, the Malawi Bishops Conference, that's right, the Polish Bishops Conference, yeah. What about what about uh, Asia with Bishop Snyder, uh, Bishop Snyder, the Kazakhstan Bishops yep. Conference, yep. the German Cardinal Gerhard Mueller, yeah, look, the what, conf 
the what? conference of Nigerian bishops, the conference of Polish bishops. Terry, there's a hue and cry right now like I've never seen before. And what Cardinal Mueller said is really clear. And, you know, he said the declaration is self-contradictory, as it still says that same-sex relations were contrary to God's law while allowing same-sex couples to receive a blessing. The church cannot celebrate one thing and teach another. That's why this document is so confusing when it contradicts itself. So, I mean, that's just, it's, it's sad. You know, he said that um, Bishop Schneider says the new policy is a great deception. He said priests should be aware of the evil that resides in the very permission to bless couples in irregular situations and same-sex couples. You know, Bishop Strickland, who I'm going to do a show tomorrow with, we, we're going to do a show for the next week, but I'll do it tomorrow. He said this, the day, the minute this, this hit the media, he asked his brother bishops to resist it. And as I told him in a text, I said, Bishop Strickland, I believe that many bishops worldwide are taking your advice and, re and saying no to this document, and more are coming in my, in my take on that. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And, and, uh, and what about the Nigerian you. bishops? What did they say? Yeah, the Nigerian bishops, it says they needed to make clear that the Vatican document does not allow for a blessing yeah, and a formal and acceptance not. of same-sex relationships. Right. Uh, all, all I can tell you, Terry, is that uh, right now I've seen the Catholic Church uh, bishops and priests around the world. They have been outspoken like I've never seen them in the past before. Yeah. And and, and some of the Pope's splainers out there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, what they're saying is that uh, this one Pope Slater was saying, hey, you can't, you don't, have, you know, Cardinal Mueller, he doesn't govern a diocese. You don't have to listen to him. He has, pff, what does he govern? So that, that, that was the argument from one of the Pope's splainers yeah. on YouTube. Can, can saying, I, yeah. you know, Bishop Strickland, Bishop Cardinal Mueller, they don't, they don't govern any diocese. You, you don't have to pay attention to them. So, so that's what the, the, the Catholic left is saying right now, Terry. Here's my other question, Jesse, and you, you, I, I might be onto something, yeah. but I think the timing of this right after the financial debacle where they had to throw a cardinal into jail for five years of, you know, $200 million misuse of some property in London, England. I'm wondering, you know, I don't hear anything about that anymore. If this was the biggest one of the century. How did it get taken about? by this document. That's my, I know that's just me reading into it, Jeff.